Good morning, guys. Today is going to be a little work day in my life while struggling with productivity because of my mental health. If you're new here, hi, my name is Mary. I'm 24 years old. I live in Arlington, Virginia, just outside of DC, and I have bipolar disorder, and this year I was diagnosed with OCD as well. I have really struggled with my mental health since I was about 12 years old um, and I went through a couple like doctors kind of threw a few diagnoses at me for years until I really committed to going to therapy. I really committed to getting a diagnosis and then after like a really long period of testing and everything um, I was diagnosed with bipolar type 2 disorder, rapid cycling bipolar type 2 when I was 21 years old in the fall of 2019. And then this year, I was diagnosed with OCD as well. My psychiatrist thinks I'm developing OCD, you know, in my mid-20s because I have not been able to manage my anxiety. And that anxiety is kind of ma manifesting in obsessive ways. And I will also link some articles down below because I have been reading about how apparently it is, it's not like uncommon for women with bipolar disorder to also develop OCD. There's like some comorbidity between those two disorders. So I'll link that down below too. This video is inspired by an Instagram q and I did last week where someone asked, I can't remember the exact wording, but someone asked like, how do you... Like, you seem like you have your life together, like you have your shit together. Um, how do you stay productive? How do you keep your life together while dealing with mental health? My answer to that is that I literally don't. Like, social media is a highlight reel. Social media is fake. We all present the best versions of ourselves. And even though I try to be really honest and transparent with you guys about my mental health struggles, I'm still, I'm like, I'm not going to post a video of me just like having a sobbing, like panic attack where I can't get any work done that day because that's not good for me, and that's not good for you as a viewer. So I can be honest with you about the fact that that happens, but I, you know, you know, you know, you know. So yeah, my answer is that I don't, like I really struggle with productivity. And I, back when I didn't work for myself, I would use sick days as mental health days if I was having like a really bad depressive episode or like a really bad anxiety spiral. Now that I work for myself completely and I work from home, like I, one, I can't really like call out, like who am I calling out to, you know? And two, you know, sometimes I will work literally completely from bed, like will wake up and grab my laptop and not leave bed or, you know, brush my teeth, wash my face for the entire day and work will get done, but I will have been like a shell of a person the entire time. When you live with a mental health disorder, it literally affects every single waking moment and like every thought that I have, like every single choice I make, thing I say, every thought I have created through the lens of like having bipolar disorder and OCD. I know not everybody has these disorders, but let's be honest, like a lot of people who follow me, I think struggle with depression and anxiety. I think that's one of the reasons you follow me probably. And although I do not have all the answers, um, I thought at least I could make this video and we could just kind of share together. And at the very least, you could know that you're not going through this by yourself. There's a couple of reasons why today is not a good mental health day for me. One, I think I'm just coming down with a cold um, and that, you know, when you feel bad physically, it's hard to feel your best mentally. So that's just kind of like out of the way. Two, my psychiatrist doubled my mood stabilizer dosage because my OCD is actually getting worse. My compulsions and my intrusive thoughts and like the paranoia, it's all, it's been getting a lot worse lately. Um, so that like doesn't make me feel good. And then this week my psychiatrist doubled my mood stabilizer to try to um, curtail the anxiety that is, is coming with that. And I haven't been able to sleep. I did not sleep at all last night. I finally managed to drift off to sleep at like seven this morning, which means I've now overslept. It's just after nine. So that's later than I usually get up and you know get going and start working. I'm upset at myself for that, but also I literally did not sleep. So I don't know if I need to like just push through or if I should just tell my doctor like I can't do the double dose. Um, I'm not sure. I got some bad news last night that I've kind of been ruminating on. There's a couple things going on in my life that are really causing me anxiety that I'm really overthinking about. And all of these things together, I, I don't know, I woke up this morning and all of those things together, I just feel not good. Um, a couple of days ago, I woke up and I had some intrusive thoughts that were so scary that I didn't, like, I felt like I couldn't leave this bedroom all day because I was so afraid of, like, these intrusive thoughts coming true. And I trapped myself in this bedroom 
all day and I worked from bed that day that was a couple days ago um and ever since then I I don't know I'm just like not right I'm just not right I don't think I'm in a depressive episode I'm not in a manic episode you know when you're bipolar like I don't know sometimes you can't tell in the moment but like I really don't think any of those things are happening to me right now I just feel generally shitty I have a bunch of things I need to get done I have an assignment that absolutely needs to get finished today. I have really pushed it to the wire. So I need to get this assignment done. I need to get some writing done, kind of same thing. Like but with the move and everything, I had to extend some deadlines, which I feel bad about anyway, because I just want to please everybody. So I have some writing that needs to get done today. And then I have three TikToks I want to film. And then obviously I'm doing this YouTube video. But yeah, I have school, work, and social media to do today. So it's a full day. Okay, I'm gonna do my makeup and get ready for the day. Obviously, getting ready makes me feel better. I feel like it makes everyone feel better and more productive and like you're just in work mode. My face is so pale. And so is my body. I scrubbed off all of my fake tan last night. I'm gonna start with the Ilia Skin Tint. This is SPF 40, so it's also my SPF. It is a little bit too pale for me. I think I got the wrong color, but it's super hydrating. In the shower, I kind of planned out what my POA is today. And I think I'm gonna do my makeup and then work on school and work um, while my hair is drying. So then when my hair is dry, I might try to give myself a little blowout right at the end. But when my hair is dry, then I'll film TikToks and stuff for the day. Yeah. This is definitely too light for me, but I really like the product, so I might just need to go. I think the Sephora sale is still happening, so I might just need to go and get a darker color. Does anybody else feel like they can't put their shirt on until their deodorant dries perfectly? Also, while I'm getting ready, I just want to share some general little mental health tips and personal tricks that I use because like I said, I mean, I've been struggling with mental health for a really long time. So I don't have all the answers, but I might have like one or two answers. I also did a little research um, just to see like, what do the experts have to say about maintaining productivity with bipolar and OCD? So I think like as I go throughout the day, I'll just share what I've learned and hopefully we can all learn and be better together. So these little factoids aren't really taken verbatim from anywhere. I've mostly just gleaned kind of the most commonly said things from a ton of different articles and I'm going to share them, but I will link some articles down in the description box if you want to like read the original content. Um, so the first thing that I learned that I immediately agreed with because I do this already is that repetitive work structure helps limit the anxiety associated with bipolar and OCD. Um, I feel like that's good to think about for a couple of reasons, namely one, like, like I said earlier, I've been learning about how um, it can be more common for people with bipolar to develop OCD. I just want to like reiterate again, I'm not a doctor. You really should be listening to um, like a professional when it comes to mental health advice. I'm just, the only thing I can tell you is like things from my own experience. But I feel like a lot of people don't recognize or don't talk enough about the fact that anxiety is like a huge part of bipolar disorder and OCD. So I guess when they say repetitive work structure, what they really mean is creating routine creates stability and kind of helps you not feel surprised. I know for me, I hate surprises. I don't want surprise birthday parties. I don't want surprise anything. I just feel like I can't handle it. When I do get surprised with something, I can't enjoy it. I don't even like receiving presents. Like, isn't that weird? I feel uncomfortable receiving presents because I don't know what's inside. I don't know. So I definitely agree with that first one, repetitive work structure. And sometimes like, you know, those like things that you'll see on social media and people will be like, my worst nightmare is getting into a nine to five and like living in the suburb. I kind of get it on some level. I too like want adventure and want to travel the world and want all of these things, but like there's literally nothing wrong if having a boring nine to five job makes you feel stable and safe. Like when I started my first office job, after literally years and years and years and years and years of, wo of working retail and food service and customer service and like shift jobs. When I first started my first office job, I was like, the structure really did help me feel calm. 
and I don't like doing the exact same thing every single day. One of the things I like about the work I do now is that it does differ from day to day. The, the general structure is always the same. Like I generally know what to expect. So I do think that that really helps my anxiety personally. Okay, the second thing that I wrote down is take more breaks to avoid burnout, work in small bursts. It's better to take a break every hour, but work during that hour than to try to set unrealistic expectations for yourself and try to push through it a whole day while feeling like stuck and paralyzed and shitty. Yeah, and wouldn't it be amazing if I listened to my own advice on that? <laughs> no, but I do think that's huge. I feel like if you don't take breaks when your mind tells you you need to take breaks, your body will tell you that you need to take breaks. And I think that that's what happened to me that day I was telling you guys about where like my intrusive thoughts were so bad that I literally could not get out of bed. October was a really crazy month just with like, my mother-in-law was here, I went home for a family party, came back, had a work trip to New York for a week, and then we moved. And so it was just like a lot of not structured things, a lot of like change, a lot of instability, not even necessarily in a bad way, just like new things that aren't like the normal like part of my every month. And I think I was like kind of ignoring the signs that my brain was telling me like, this is a lot, you need to take time for yourself, you need to take care for yourself. And I just like didn't do anything, didn't do anything to take care of myself. And I think that's why at that point, like my, my brain and body were just like, they shorted out, like an electrical circuit just like fizzled out. And that's why I like could not leave my bedroom. Um, That was the Charlotte Tilbury contour wand in dark, by the way. This is the Charlotte Tilbury um, blush wand in pink gasm. Yeah, and I know that's hard, especially because we live in such a hustle culture society and it's so, Hard to keep up with for anyone, for sure. Like, I don't think that's necessarily good for anyone, but it's especially hard when, you ha when you're neurodivergent, when you have other things going on. And I'm not saying that we underperform, like I'm not undermining us whatsoever. I just think that sometimes if you need extra time or you need different accommodations or whatever, the world is not built to allow for that. I mean, when I, when I was working for the government, they literally cut my pay by 12K a year because I requested a disability accommodation. And in order to give me that accommodation, this is so illegal by the way, they cut my pay 12K a year to accommodate for the accommodation. And I tried to fight that and it just wasn't possible. And at the end of the day, I was like, okay, well it's either, I mean, it's either take that or get fired. So like I took it obviously, but I'm like heated. I'm like sweating even thinking about it. It makes me so mad even now. So take breaks. I wanted to just get a move on with the rest of the vlog, so I didn't show the rest of my makeup, but I just finished my face with my hourglass products that I always use, and my eyebrows and eyelashes are literally the same as what I've been doing for like a year. <laughs> a lot of mascara on my eyelid that I need to get off. I literally don't know how to put on mascara without getting it all over myself. I think I'm gonna blow my hair out after it's dried like 80% of the way. I'm just gonna do a little serum. This is the Bleach London Hair Elixir. I really, really love it. I am quickly taking some of my anxiety medication. Um, I don't necessarily take this every day, only when my anxiety is really bad, but it is starting. Ah! Things are in full swing already today, so cheers. I'm gonna get myself some fun beverages to motivate me. I'm a drink girly. I'll always like to have one, like at least one, my Stanley Cup. I actually just got another one. Um, this is the 2.0 version that just came out. And I don't know if you can see, but it's like pink and then the straw doesn't come out, although ugh, it does still leak, it just leaked on me. I always have water with me and then I'm gonna make some tea and pour myself a kombucha. So here's how my home office is coming along. Ignore that clothing rack, I'm gonna get rid of it. I don't have enough space for it, so I'm gonna give it to a friend. Um, I really, really love how it's coming. I do have my walking pad and desk riser, but I have given myself permission to just not even think about being that girl boss today. It'll be a miracle if I get all my stuff done anyway without having a panic attack, so that's just not in the cards. Here's my little outfit, grout fit, for today. These are, what are these? Um, Savage by Fenty. This is my favorite t-shirt from Abercrombie. And my little smiley face slippers are Amazon. Here's my little desk setup. I have all my beverages lined up. I do want to get coasters for my desk. And then this is my pilonodal cyst pillow. Um, if I'm not using the walking pad and I am sitting down, I have to use this pillow um, for my back and for my 
tailbone. So that's how it's coming. I think it's really cute. I think for maximum cozy and good vibes, I'm gonna light a candle in here. I'll be honest, I've never done that before, purely for the video, but I do think it will be nice and it will make the room smell good and just help the whole atmosphere be calming. So I'm gonna go get a candle. This candle is called Fireside. It's from Target. I love it. This one and Sugared Birch are big favorites of mine. Chamomile tea is probably not the best choice for someone who hasn't slept in two nights, but all my other teas are green teas, and even though they only have a little bit of caffeine, it's still too much. For a day like today, where I'm already anxious and it's first thing in the morning, like, it's still too much. Let's do one more little tip, and then I really need to crack down. This one, this is a quote that I found that I really, really like and relate to, and it says, small actions create a chain of results. A body in motion has a much better chance of getting something done than a body on the couch. Meaning, if you're having a bad mental health day, or this is how I'm interpreting the meaning. This is like how I'm applying it to my life. If I'm having a bad mental health day, and I'm on the couch or I'm in bed and I start to stress about all the things I have to do, they feel very overwhelming because I haven't started anything yet. So instead of being like, I'm in bed and I need to get up and I need to have a super productive day but I feel like shit, I'm interpreting this quote to mean like, if you start small like I've done today, making the bed, taking a shower, putting on makeup, putting on, I mean I know this isn't like an outfit, but it's not the clothes I slept in, making drinks, like I feel more prepared to start my tasks now than I did when I was in bed this morning because a body in motion has a better chance of getting something done. Small actions create a chain of results. It feels kind of cliche, it feels kind of like obvious when you think about it, but things that seem obvious can still be incredibly difficult to actually apply to your own life. Why am I tearing up? <laughs> This is how you know that like I'm having a rough time lately. Why am I like getting emotional talking about this? But yeah, something can seem really obvious to like a mentally healthy person. And if you're watching this and you're mentally healthy and you're thinking like Mary, you're so pathetic, um, valid. But I don't know, like it's hard. It is hard. I, I really try to make my content feel hopeful for people with bipolar disorder or I get mean I guess like OCD now. I really do want my content to kind of show that like you can honor your mental health and you can take it seriously and take care of it and acknowledge how difficult it is and acknowledge how hard it can be but still have a life that feels meaningful and have a life that feels hopeful. Not to like get too deep but I have had two unaliving attempts in my life and those were years ago in college, and I do feel like I've grown a lot since then, and since then I've kind of tried to make myself realize that like life can be hopeful even when you feel in the absolute pits of despair. I want my content to feel like an honest and vulnerable and transparent view on what it's really like to be like, you know, a 24-year-old girl with bipolar disorder. I really, really do believe that like there is beauty in life still. So. <laughs> that is enough of that. Let's go to work. didn't even realize that my last assignment had been graded. So I checked that and I actually got a perfect score on it. So that was a nice little boost that kind of gave me the pump I needed to finish this one, which took me a long time. <laughs> um, so I finished my assignment. I caught up on all of my emails. I reviewed a bunch of things that needed like a once over. I spoke with my team. The weird thing about being on the East Coast is that literally all of my colleagues actually are on the west coast so i generally speaking don't start communicating with them like you know they're not checking their emails until about 11 11 30 my time so that's always kind of nice because it gives me extra time in the morning to like work on school work on other things like my work that's not social media related it gives me like a couple uninterrupted hours to do that before um yeah before my team is online but that's done 
All of my beverages are gone except for my water, which I really haven't been drinking enough water lately, so I need to finish that. I had a little snack that's done. I need to make lunch, but we don't really have any groceries. So I could walk out and like get a salad or I could microwave a burrito. Those are my options right now. I have three TikToks that I wanna to film today. I wanna to do an update in my bra series, like finding the perfect bra series. Um, if you don't follow me on TikTok, you don't know what I'm talking about, but I haven't made a video for that series in honestly, I think like a month, maybe over a month, just because October was so wild. But I have two or three bras that I want to talk about, so we'd make one of those. And then I am gonna film a Princess Polly haul, which is actually a sponsored video. Those are usually pretty easy, it's just like a try on haul. And then I wanna film another, um, recreating Pinterest outfits, get ready with me video. I don't know, I guess we'll just see where we're at at the end of that, but I need to go do my hair. So mentally, I, um, how am I doing? I feel proud of myself for getting that assignment done because that was really stressing me out. I'm really tired. Not sleeping has been messing with my head all day. I just feel like delirious, I'm so tired. I don't even know how many hours I've been up at this point. The anxiety meds are definitely helping, but I keep having like, breakthrough moments where I start to panic and get really stressed and then I have to like bring it back and I mean I've definitely had a couple of those moments today and then just overall I'm struggling to not feel like I don't know like sometimes I feel like I try so hard to push my anxiety down because I hate feeling anxious and then I just don't feel anything at all and that's probably not good either although that is good for getting work done <laughs> I really would like so much rather not film today I mean, I know that sounds weird because I'm like filming this YouTube video right now. Um, something that gives me anxiety with TikTok is that it's much more in the moment. Like, apart from the Princess Bali video, which has to be submitted for review, I almost always try, I, well, I don't know. I try to film things within like a day or two of when I post them just so like the continuity makes sense. Um, and that stresses me out sometimes because like right now I'm not feeling my best and it's okay right now because i'm talking to you guys about the fact that i don't feel my best but when i'm making the bra video and when i'm going to do this get ready with me i'm not going to be feeling my best but that's not what the video is about so i don't want to talk about it um and i don't think that's fake i mean maybe some people think that's fake i'm not gonna like i don't know i'm not gonna go out of my way to be like ah, you know and like be over the top like happy if that's not how i feel but i always just feel guilty filming when i don't feel well, I don't know. I'm just gonna do some touch-ups. <laughs> Filming this video has helped me feel motivated and kind of stay on task more so than I would feel if I wasn't filming this video because it's almost like accountability. And it reminds me of the fact that before I ever had like followers on TikTok, I would, f I mean, I posted constantly on TikTok. I posted on TikTok like three or four times a day, every single day for like a year and a half before I ever made a dime off of it. And I also posted like that consistently for six or seven months before I had, you know, even like 10,000 followers. Um, but I would post like little day in my life videos, like little videos, just because they were fun to make and I was having a good time. Um, so, Weirdly enough, this is helping me stay on track. So maybe it's like productive and helpful to do little things like that. Like maybe if you're struggling to stay on task, doing like a little day in my life vlog on TikTok or whatever, even if you don't post it, or even if you post it to like, you know, your 30 friends who follow you, maybe some people would think that's cringe. I don't think it's cringe. Maybe I'm just cringe. It just kind of makes it fun. It just kind of makes it feel like, like it's a game. I don't know. Okay, this looks good enough. Good enough to film TikToks. I don't always do my hair before I make videos, but a uh, blowout is actually a lot easier for me to maintain than my natural texture because it doesn't get as frizzy, it's easier to put product in, it's easier to use dry shampoo, so this will kind of help me have this 
wash lasts a little bit longer. There are three bras that I want to talk about. I need to find them. I'm wearing one of them, actually. One I'm wearing is from Skims, and then there's a third love one that I want to talk about, but I can't find it. Yes, okay. I haven't really figured out the perfect background to film these little videos in in the new apartment yet. I've been using just this hallway. That's the entrance to the office, which is not bad. Or a plain wall is not bad either, but I feel like it's boring. Um, and I don't know, I feel like having something visually interesting in the background just, just kind of helps, I don't know, make people want to watch the video. But I think for now it's still going to be either this hallway or this background. You just check the angles and the lighting. That looks weird. It's not bad, it's just kind of plain, you know? I feel like given the circumstances, this is potentially the best that we can do. Watch me start to obsess over it and change the angle like 20 times. This is fine, this is fine. I'm gonna film these three videos. I will check back in when I'm editing them. It's much later. I filmed the raw video and the recreating the Pinterest outfit video. I'm not gonna do the Princess Polly one today just cause I feel bad. Like I don't wanna show up as not my best self for a brand, you know? I feel like it's okay to be lower energy in my own regular content because hopefully you guys get that and you get me and you know like this is just what happens when you have rough mental health but if a brand is like paying me to promote product i don't want to be not my best self so i'm gonna film that tomorrow and that's fine it's not due yet matthew took some quick pictures of me um after i did the pinterest outfit video because i need to make a like to know it post and an instagram story post um, linking all of the outfit details and then I will also use this content as Pinterest content. Here was the inspo photo and then I looked nowhere near as cool. I honestly, I don't know, this trend isn't really for me I don't think but the whole point of the videos is to try different trends so at least I tried it. I don't really like the photos but I'm sure there's one or two that will work. Let's do one more. Okay this one, when I read this one for the first time it absolutely came from my neck. This is a direct quote. Get real about mania. Mania is not productivity, it is illness. You can't use mania to work and have it not spill into your life. Shakes me to my core. And it is so right. I feel like I have had so many periods of my life that I've looked back on and I'm like, life was so much better than I was so energetic. I was getting so much stuff done. And then if I get real with myself, I'm like, that was a manic period. I also was starting arguments with people and being irritable and being a bitch and spending lots of money and acting irrationally and doing stupid shit. That was just a good reminder. Mania is not productivity. And you know what? I'm gonna go as far as to say depression is not laziness. Mania is not productivity. Depression is not laziness. If you take anything from this video at all, I think it should be that. Okay, here is the video. Pinterest fall trends and... Wait, did I do everything right? Yes, post. Okay, that's good, because at least I have one video up today. We have decided we're just gonna go to dinner. I'll be honest, cooking is one of my least favorite things anyway, and when I'm not feeling my best, it's one of the first things that I'm like happy to get rid of. And Matt's not really feeling up to anything either, so we're just gonna go get food. I also really love meal prep kits. Here's another little random tip. The meal prep kits at Costco and the pre-made soups at Trader Joe's have saved me many a dark, dark night. I'm home from dinner. Uh, we went to a little Japanese barbecue place. It was super good. Look at the state of my office. And you know what? I am not gonna clean it today. I know that's terrible. I'll take the dishes to the kitchen. I don't know, that's tomorrow's problem. I feel like I've done enough today. It was our first time there, so we didn't know what to get. Oh, yeah. So I feel like we did waste a couple of our all-you-can-eat dishes on things that weren't our preference, just because we didn't know, yeah. but now we know. We ended up getting a lot of the same stuff once we figured out. But yeah. Before. Yeah. Anyway. I didn't show um, the rest of me working this afternoon because it just simply wasn't interesting. I feel like no one wants to watch me sit on a couch and like study and read a textbook all <laughs> for like, a couple hours. So I just didn't show that. Yeah, I mean, I got a lot done today. So not as much as I could have gotten done, but a lot more than I wanted to get done. Because to be honest, I obviously wanted to stay in bed and cry and i did cry I actually did cry a little bit that i didn't even show because i felt like awkward crying on camera but 
a couple of tears were shed at one point. <laughs> I think now I'm gonna take a shower, obviously, because I left the house. And we're probably just going to watch Netflix and chill on the couch. I think I might go ahead and end the vlog here just because I know the rest of this night is not going to be like super interesting. Our usual nightly routine is just like finding a show that we like. We're currently watching The Great British Bake Off and Dubai Bling. I guess I just wanted to say that if you made it to the end of this video and you either have the same conditions that I do or even just different ones and that is something that's caused you a lot of loneliness or a lot of self-loathing, like maybe you felt lazy, maybe you felt frustrated at yourself for not being able to get things done. I just hope that you know that you're not those things. I know it's really difficult to remind ourselves of that, but mania is not productivity, depression is not laziness, self-care is productive. I don't know, I think productive can mean so many different things and it can also look so different day to day. Like for how I felt today, I got a lot done and I can be proud of myself, even though I know that if it was a day where I was feeling better mentally, I would have gotten more done, but that doesn't matter because it's not one of those days. Like I have to live in the reality of the moment and the reality of today was that I did the best I could. And I think that's what we're all doing. We're just all doing the best that we can. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you stick around um, and subscribe if you haven't already and see the next one. I will see you in the next one.